Good afternoon, friends. This is Sergey Kromchenko from Los Angeles, California. I'm not in Los Angeles, California. I'm in Tulum, Mexico, living the nomadic life. Since no one cares where you're at, if you can work remotely, if you're a coder, if you're a QA engineer, etc. Because code is everywhere. It's there. It's there. It's here. It's here. It's right behind me as well. Anyways, let's talk about a Cypress I.O. and how can you install it and what can you do with Cypress I.O. And also I'll show you a couple of cool tricks about a Cypress since it became very popular lately and now I'm even thinking about maybe I should use it for one of the projects that we have at work. Let's go. All right, let's install Cypress. So I've created folders, a folder called Cypress and now we're gonna switch to browser, navigate to cypress.io and follow their basic instructions. So npm install Cypress. I'm gonna click on it to copy it, then I'm gonna go back here. We're going to run command npm install Cypress and this should install it from scratch. Let's give it a couple of seconds. Perfect, Cypress has been installed. Now, what do we do next? So in the small letters, with the small letters right here, it says in, install it, run the command or download it, and then install Cypress for Mac, Linux, or Windows, then get started. Honestly, I think they, they could make those letters a little bigger, because for the first time I went all the way down, I didn't look at the tiny letters. And then, okay, installing Cypress, what are we gonna learn? Okay, system requirements, all right, Mac OS, that's what we're using. Node.js, you got it. Perfect, CentOS, Docker, installing. NPM install Cypress via NPM. So by this, they're saying navigate to the folder where you want it to be. And if you remember, we were at the Cypress folder already. Then run this command. We ran NPM install Cypress without saving it to a dev section of package.json, which is fine. You can either run it that way or that way. It will not break anything. Then after you install it, I will install Cypress local SDL dependency. Make sure that you already run npm in it or you have node modules folder. So we did not do that, but the, what the cool thing is that when we ran npm install Cypress, it automatically created uh, package.json and node modules. We did not have to run npm in it, which stands for initialize. So it, it was all done with the help of one command. Awesome. We're gonna scroll down through a lot of information and find the one to run it. Like, how do we run it? Operating Cypress, perfect. There are multiple ways to do that. Here's the long way. Uh, shortcuts using bin, here's another way. And here's the short way. I would say it's the shortest way. We're using npx, which is a node package executor. So let's copy that command, run it. And, oh wow, Cypress application is opening up. That's cool, they even have a UI for it. Awesome. So in this UI, you see quite a few things. And the first one that you will most likely pay attention to is we have a couple of tabs here. Tests, runs, and settings. And the browser to choose, and they have two of them only because they are using Chromium. Um, they're only supporting Chromium-based browsers. So integration tests. So these are the tests that are there by default. And when I say are there, I mean inside of this folder that was just installed. Cypress and then integration. If you take, if you compare it with the screen that we're, with the pop up that we're seeing right here, integration tests, integration, to do spec, that should be in get started, I believe. Yeah, to do spec. And then in advanced examples, we see quite a few other things that we can take a look. But let's run it for the beginning so you guys could see what actually happens and how do you run it. So it is as simple as clicking on this button right here to do spec. And as soon as you click it, you'll see opening Chrome 95 right there. And that's what happens. Now we're seeing something quite impressive. We don't only have a UI where the test executes. We also have a, what do you call it? Analytics dashboard or just a, just a logs on the left side that you can actually click on. You see execution of our, of our test cases and you see which one ran after which one. And also when we open one up, we can see all of the code in the same way that we had it, that we had it in the VS code. So let's click on to do spec. And we can see the same mocha as we all got used to, probably, unless you use Cucumber or something else. Uh, so we have a describe, which is a test suite. 
Then we have a before each, which is just a hook. And then we have it. It displays uh, to do items by default. So it, one it is a one task case for those who do not know. And I want to describe is a task suite. So we organize many task cases in a task suite. Awesome, let's move on. So same thing happens here. We have our task suite, which is example to do app. And then the number one, which is with a checkup test. So example to do app right here. And then we should have another one with the checked tasks. Perfect. So we had uh, two, pretty much two suites here. Uh, so the in the first one, we have the display to do items by default. That's the task case. We had a get call, then another get call, and another get call. And all of them had assertions. And what happened is we have navigated to the page right here to example.cypress.io to do. And that happened before every task case. And then inside, we, we've, got a, uh, we've got element by specifying the selector. And we, we have verified, we have used a default assertion library, which is a chai, but they use it by default. They use it underneath the hood. Uh, and then we're using should to verify that we have two, uh, we had two elements and there were only two of them, no more, no less. If we navigate back and click here on get, you see that that selector, contain, uh, that selector will find two elements and then we, exp we use our assertion to verify that there were two of them only. Awesome, and the same thing applies. We get, we get an element by specifying the selector and then we're choosing first one. We're saying there will be two of them but the first one should be uh, should have text pay electricity bill, which it actually is. And then we get the list again, and we say second one should have text walk through uh, walk the dog, which is right there as well. Awesome. So that's pretty that's pretty detailed in my opinion, and I do like it a lot. And I'll possibly consider it for the next project we're gonna work on. Same thing happens here. Um, there is nothing new. Bunch of the commands and a couple of assertions. But now, uh, let's see what else we have here. We have uh, amount of all the tests that we ran. We have a number of tests passed. We had a number of tests failed. And then we also have amount of time it took to run all of them together. All right, let's go back to our Cypress application, but how do we kill it? Just by clicking stop. Perfect. So now what we can do, we can break this application by navigating to Instagram.com. So we could see how exactly will they show us those error messages. Like, let's click on Cypress, click on to do, and run it one more time. Okay, it's running. It's loading Instagram.com. And as you can see, Instagram.com is much slower than their website. Because at the beginning, I, I was thinking like, oh, wow, Cypress is so fast. Well, Cypress is fast. I'm not sure how, how much faster it is compared to other frameworks, uh, but the most, the slowest thing usually is the actual server that gives you a response. So the page load time would be slowing you down a lot. All right, it's still running. Let's take a look at the address that we have here. We visited this page uh, by CLC, uh, and that sent us a couple of requests, post request, get request, and then we tried to get a list of elements. Those two, if you remember, the link expected was two, but we got zero since there were none. Awesome, and then we got more assertions, timeout, retrying after, let's see, after four seconds. Expected to find element, but never found it. That's pretty descriptive, and um, I would say it's an amazing framework for the beginners, because you, will, you can clearly see everything that you need to see like all of the adders and the adder messages. And you don't even have to, you know, stick to the console and check it and scroll it. You can see everything in the UI, which is pretty amazing. I haven't seen any other frameworks so far that would give you such a friendly looking UI. Awesome. All right, now you know how to run Cypress IO and you know how adders will look like and you know how friendly it is. 
Now, let's take a look at one of the coolest websites that I've seen so far. Actually, it's a Git repo. So if you navigate to github.com slash Bruno Police slash Awesome Cypress, you will see that this guy, who I'm really thankful to, have gathered so much information about his Cypress. All of the contents, uh, official documentation, tools, courses, plugins, component testing, forms, reporting, containers, blogs, talks, podcasts, screencasts, webinars, and other examples. Oh my gosh, that's quite a lot of stuff. But let me quickly show you one of the coolest things that I've seen here. And is, you guys have heard that, that Cypress has a paid feature, which is called Dashboard. But thanks to Andrew Goldis, who built an open source alternative to Cypress Dashboard. And if we click on it, you will see all of the features this, that this dash, dashboard has. So, table of content, features. Run Cypress tasks in parallels with no limitations for free. That's great. Upload screenshots to your own storage. Browse test results, screenshots, and video recordings. Self-hosted. It means you can use your own infrastructure to save data wherever you like, so you could use it in, in any possible way you want. Integrated with the GitHub and Slack or anything else with the webhooks. That's a deal breaker. Literally, this, this repo right here is quite a deal breaker for me. I'm in love with Cypress now. And also works on popular platforms uh, and your data centers, the Docker images, Docker Compose files, Kubernetes, etc. That's quite amazing. I such a juicy uh, GitHub repository. So I highly recommend you guys to test it out. And let me know which of these features you would guys like to see on the next YouTube video so you could use it for your own benefits. Now you know some of the tricks that you could use to impress your coworkers or even get a raise. Who knows? Anyways, if you want to see what is the difference between WebDriver IO and a Cypress IO, which one is a better, which one is more popular, which one is more efficient, check out the video with a link right on the top of the screen. And don't forget to leave a comment below and tell me what do you think about it? What is your opinion about a WebDriver IO versus Cypress IO?